watch has therefore taken an initiative in the name of Project Swades. I would request the Honorable Chief Guest to please unravel this major campaign, which would include the creation of global faculty database, continued interactions, focused interactions, and targeted visits to bring back Indian faculty. my colleagues in my party and my 
uh, in my uh, mature democracy. Um, I can point to many, many dimensions of democracy that um, we don't seem to uh, to show as uh, as uh, being mature. Um, the way we deal with people, the way we deal with differences, the way we deal with pain, the way we the way we deal with people who are different from us, the way we want to deal with countries, our neighbors, the way we want to deal with the world. Um, and sadly, I must say that recently I was at a gathering on the Civil Service Day, listening to one of our top civil servants, uh, Mr. Narish Chandra, who became governor, ambassador, civil servant uh, uh, of the, the best kind uh, as cabinet secretary. And he was he was talking about uh, the future of the world and what people thought the world is going to be like, the place China and India and other countries in Europe, Asia, we want to play in the world. And uh, in that context, he said, he quoted Henry Kissinger, uh, saying that Henry Kissinger said, well, you know, the 21st century is going to be a century of X, Y, and Z. And, uh, and probably, and probably India. And he said, I was, uh, I was ambassador and I walked up to uh, Henry Kissinger and said, uh, um, Mr. Kissinger, why do you use the word probably India? And uh, he said, Henry Kissinger said to me, uh, I know, look, I, I know that India has done some, some remarkable things and India is the second fastest growing economy and um, uh, India is project, projected as going to be a shining example of what you can do with democracy. But the reason why I use the word probable, and because now you have interceded, I'm willing to use the word most probable, but uh, the reason why I use uh, a term such as probable is because India has one major, one major impediment, and there's somebody who doesn't seem to want India to be in the number one slot. And he said, I asked him, then, who is that? Thinking that he might say China, or he might say the United States, or he might say Japan, or he might say Africa, or he might say Europe, or he might say anybody else, Pakistan. And he said, well, he paused for a while, smiled, and said, Indians. Um, only people who can stop India from being number one are Indians. And the only people who can make India number one are Indians. Um, now, what kind of what kind of maturity is is our democracy exhibiting? If the very people who can make us number one and who have brought us to the very doorstep of being number one are the people who are now being identified as those who will stop us from being number one, and now this challenge is to be faced by you, because you have to create the people who will stop. India from being stopped by somebody else from being number one and will make India number one. And I think that will be the greatest tribute that we can pay to the departed soul, uh, the late Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, as indeed the great martyrs and the great leaders, uh, legion of leaders that we have had in our country, and uh, each one has made a remarkable contribution. And I think that if we don't lack in something we don't like an example and icons and people who have shown us the path to a glorious future. Uh, we have all of them, people with spiritual greatness, people with tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, control of, of philosophy, people who have been scholars, people who have been yeah. humanists, people yeah. who have been just great leaders of men and women. And uh, for such, for such a country, for such a society, uh, there is nothing, really, nothing really that we can complain that we didn't have to aspire to greatness. And I say this in the gathering of, of, of uh, teachers, and I believe all of you made your presentation, and as Mrs. Shona said, uh, it would be, uh, each one would be a winning presentation. On another day, in another hall, in another com combination, you might have you might have got the award today. Others have, have taken the award, but you know, and you 
uh, will know from your experience in a classroom and your experience of teaching is that uh, you don't necessarily get an award every day. But uh, what you do is that you get a chance to spot that very element, that very seed in every person, in every child, that could be an award-winning plant in the future. That's what you're really equipped to do, and that's what makes your job and your profession absolutely fascinating. I was told uh, by my mother that my grandfather, Dr. Zakir Hussain, once told her that there are two people, only two kinds of people in the world, who are never jealous of the success of a child. One is the mother, not the father, mind you. One is the mother, and the other one is the teacher. Uh, everybody else in Asia, your brother, your sister, everybody else in the world, not your mother and not your teacher. And if the teacher is a mother, my God, double, <laughs> double advantage. You have a double advantage. And that's what, fortunately, one of the great success stories of inclusion today in India is, certainly if my experience with DPS is, sorry, um, you need reservations for men uh, because uh, we have more than 90%, 95% uh, teachers in the very public school system are women and absolutely, absolutely outstanding. Uh, sometimes we think that, you know, if you don't have a sprinkling of men, it will seem like we are biased, gender biased, uh, because uh, we don't give men a chance. But really this is a success, not reservations, uh, not talking about things, but actually see them happen naturally, organically, and uh, in, a, in a democratic process where transparently, professionally, the selection itself brings out the best in society and the best in society for that job. Uh, and this is a very critical job for our women. And I think that that says a lot for elements in our democracy that we can say are extremely mature, strong, and uh, give, give a sense that our foundations are some things that we can be really proud of. But as I said, there are elements in our democracy that makes me wonder. And now let's just tell, let me tell you this. We are a mature democracy. I went this morning at 5.30 to the Samadhi of, of late Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. He was Prime Minister. He was not just a Congress leader or leader of a political party. Uh, he was not uh, just a member of an eminent family. He was India's Prime Minister and a popular young Prime Minister. And we had a huge gathering of people who come uh, at every anniversary, every time. The President of India was there, the Vice President of India was there, the Prime Minister was there, and of course, his family was there. And those of us who were inspired by him, we were all there. Not a single leader, not a single leader from any opposition party was there this morning. And also when I go to functions like your function, you like ministers to come. You like people from the ruling party to come, which is fine. We have a job to do, you have a message to give to us, um, uh, and, and uh, to give you a hand of recognition and applause for the good work that you're doing so that the government is better informed. But I find that there are such few platforms, such few platforms minus the media platforms, where we share the platforms with people in the opposition. We could be in the opposition one day, they could be in government. They have been in government and we've been in opposition. Today we are in government and they are in opposition and there's a whole spectrum of people in the opposition. But we never share the stage as though what I'm doing here today does not concern them. Or that if they were in power and they were doing something similar, it wouldn't concern me. How can that be? Are we so divided? Are we so, are we so, uh, uh, have we personalized public discourse so much that we can't gather to agree upon something which is so fundamental? I don't think you know uh, amongst uh, your children who comes from which political background and whose parent uh, votes in one way or votes in another way. 
And I think the world over, the world over, people don't make these distinctions in institutions like universities and schools and colleges. But it's sad that these distinctions are made in our life. And that's what makes us incomplete. And that's what, that's what makes us weak. And that's what muddies or, or makes our vision opaque, the kind of vision that uh, we have. It not projected us with the clarity and, and uh, uh, with the intensity that we should be projecting it. And if we can't project it for ourselves, at the gathering of young, hearted people, grown-ups, how will we do it for the real young? I now want to tell you about, uh, and I've shared this with Mrs. Shona. I lost my daughter when she was very young, she was 16, uh, again from the DPS, DPS system. And I thought that I, I want to do something, something for little girls who didn't get what she had. She had everything. She had good education. She had good health. Uh, she had good doctors to look after her. But, uh, but she was given a short life. And I thought there are little girls who have much longer lives. But they don't get the same, same kind of care. And they don't get the same kind of support. And can I do something for them? Of course, I've been associated with DPS. And, and I could have been happy to say there are thousands and thousands of children now running into lakhs, not thousands, that are associated with the DPS stamp. Uh, and I'm really proud that uh, I said one day in the one DPS function, uh, quoting from Chairman Mao, that he talked about a thousand flowers should bloom, and I want a thousand schools to bloom. Uh, when uh, my colleagues at DPS were struggling to go from the third to the fourth, from the fourth to the fifth school, and arguing about every new school, I said, let a thousand flowers bloom. This is not something that is ours. This is just an idea that should be allowed to escape the confines of classrooms and the boundaries and the campuses of DPS. And this is an idea that should just go and light up the world for any number of people. Um, and let us not worry about who will nurture this idea beyond the nurturing that we have done. And today, frankly, I think we have about 200 DPS schools. Not a thousand yet, 200. Uh, but I thought that that is, that's on a big scale. There's something small that we can do. And you did that very beautiful play, this is Jonah. Um, after Q or something? Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, then your training as educationists is incomplete. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful portrayal of the reality of DPS, of a first clash because a ball goes over, over the boundary wall. The first clash between, if you allow me, uh, call them middle class elite students of DPS with kids who are out in the street. And how they come face to face for the first time. And how they discover each other for the first time and they realize how incomplete their lives were without having come face to face because of that ball. And this is all uh, uh, an outcome of Delhi Public Schools' uh, uh, invention of uh, breaking down that wall. Mrs. Jona started this when she was principal of Archipuram, uh, which was uh, getting children who would never hope to go to a good school and bringing them out to their homes and in the afternoon giving them exactly the same respect and sense of belonging that children who could pay fees, fees would, uh, could get in the mornings. And this was a shiksha kendra. And uh, that's, how, that's how a whole new stream was born. Um, and that was portrayed in this little play. This play left a deep impression, impression on me and I thought, I've got to do something similar somewhere. So in my own home uh, constituency in Farukhabad, I looked around and I found my father had a small mango orchard. And uh, you know, these days we plan scientifically, no trees cutting, building here, building there. And I said, uh, I want to do the same thing in its natural form. I'll take this orchard uh, and I will name it after my little girl, Aisha. And I've called the school Aisha's Orchard. It is not called school, it is called Aisha's Orchard. And under the mango trees, we built little classes so that you can reach out from any classroom, 
reach out of the window and actually grab a mango. And we built a little school which has only 80 children, 81 children right now, but hopefully one day there will be a whole new generation of children growing up in their own surroundings, where they belong, where they feel comfortable, but where they get the most uh, latest cutting education, because this little orchard school actually has, actually has uh, smart classes. So we combine the, the, the flavor of uh, the flavor, pastoral flavor of an ordinary orchard in Uttar Pradesh with smart classes. And we hope that this school one day will become a new job, uh, a new kind of school. And that's my, uh, my little uh, offering uh, to myself, really, uh, and of course to those children and people who will get associated with that school, that there is always something different that you can do. And that's the message I want to give to you today, is when you go back, just look around and see your kids once more. You will find that there is one who thinks, who does things differently, uh, or she does or says things differently. That's the one, that's the one who will be your leader. Not someone uh, who is smart and, and uh, in the conventional sort of way. Somebody who is different, who will make a difference to your lives and lives of any other people. Today you've gathered here to applaud each other, recognize each other, learn from each other, teach each other. Uh, you gave me this opportunity to come and say a few words. Thank you very much. I'm great, greatly honored. Delighted that I see some faces uh, here that uh, are familiar faces over the years. Some new faces. Uh, my congratulations to, to the young people, all these young people who put together this wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, school summit 2013 um, on behalf of Engineering Watch. I thought uh, engineering was only about, about uh, machines, but you're actually working on engineering uh, and go straight to the mind. Uh, congratulations. Wonderful, wonderful. That you're Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you a lot, sir, for your insights. Before you leave, we would like to request you to please accept a token of thanks from our founder director.